You might be asking, can the GameCube even run emulators? Well, if you're subscribed to my channel, you'll know the answer is definitely yes. You might be asking now, how can I do it? Well in this video, I'll show you exactly that. My name's Jack Sorrell, and today I'll show you how to install emulators on your GameCube. This might be news to you, but the GameCube can actually run quite a few emulators, and runs most very well, if not perfectly. When it comes to NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance emulators, they run pretty much perfectly. However, certain emulators like Nintendo 64 don't run so well, so you are limited on which games you can emulate and enjoy on the GameCube. But like I said, most emulators made for the GameCube work very well, so let's focus on those. If you're following along, you'll have to watch my previous video first on how to homebrew the GameCube. To watch that video, click the I in the top right hand corner now. And if you're just watching for fun, I also recommend watching that video for the full retro homebrew experience. If you want to support my channel, consider becoming a channel member. Just click that blue join button below this video. Shouting out our channel members, we have Caesar Wolf and Steven Gonzalez. So a huge shout out and thank you to them. But now, let's get started, and remember to leave a like on this video if it helped you out. First of all, head over to your PC, and in your browser's URL bar, type in gamecube.console.guide, and you'll be taken to the GameCube page on my website. Scroll down to this video here, and you'll see all the links we'll need. I'll show you how to install an SNES emulator and a GBA emulator, but the process for every other emulator is pretty much the same. Showing the same process in this video again and again isn't necessary. Just click this button right here to find even more emulators, and use roughly the same process I'm about to show you. Let's start with the SNES emulator. Just click the button, and then save the file to your desktop. And then do the same with the GBA emulator. Now we'll extract these zip folders. Right click it, and then click extract all, then press enter. Do the same with the other zip folder too. Now that we have the contents of the zip folders, we can throw the zip folders away. Let's get our GameCube's SD card ready to copy the files over. Starting with the SNES emulator, SNES 9X, copy the doll file over to the SD card. I recommend putting it on the root. Next is the GBA emulator called MGBA. This one has a lot of files inside, but the file we need is of the doll file type. Because I have file extensions enabled in Windows, I can see the file is called mgba.doll, but if you don't, you can be sure it's a doll file by right clicking it, then clicking properties, and then seeing the file type. It should say, type of file DOL. Most, if not all, GameCube homebrew apps are doll files. Oh, and don't forget this pretty important step. These emulators need games to play, don't they? Let's make a new folder on the SD card. You can name it games or ROMs or anything you like. Then inside that folder, make a folder for your games. So I'll make a folder called GBA for my GBA games to keep the files on the SD card organised. Then I'll make an SNES folder for my SNES games to go inside. I'll select my GBA games which I have down here, and do a simple drag and drop into the GBA folder. And then the same with the SNES games, but into the SNES folder. Now we have all the files we need on our SD card, and it's nice and organised too. But there is one last thing. Remember in my last video, I said I'd show you how to make Swiss boot automatically from Action Replay. 
Well, here it is. Here's my pro tip, which makes your GameCube open Swiss automatically and makes your boot time faster. What we're going to do is take our Swiss doll file and rename it. We're going to rename it to Auto EXEC. This tells Action Replay to automatically execute Swiss on boot, which, like I said, makes the time from power on to Swiss a bit faster and skips the Action Replay selection screen. If you like that tip, let me know in the comments because in my next video I'll show off an even bigger one. My next tip will be how to use larger micro SD cards on your GameCube. We'll still need the 2GB card, but I'll show you how you can switch out for a larger one, which can store all of your GameCube games, emulators and anything else. GameCube games are about 1.5GB, so our current 2GB card won't get us very far. So definitely subscribe right now to catch that tip in my next video. But now, let's get these emulators running on our GameCube. Let's eject the micro SD card from our PC. Now with the SD card in the GameCube, let's turn it on. Yep, that's the auto execute feature in action. It saves a bit of time, doesn't it? Now that we're in Swiss, let's open the ROMs folder to get used to the file structure we'll have to learn when navigating in the emulators. Here's all my games folders, some of which I created off camera, and inside are the games for that system. We'll be using a similar interface like this when in the emulators. Now let's go back and launch the SNES emulator. Just select it and then press A. The current folder we're in is empty. Let's go up a level, and then one more, and find our ROMs folder. Then find the SNES folder and launch a game from it. Let's go with F0. The game should load up and there it is, the game's title screen. I've played this emulator for a few hours now and it's safe to say that it runs almost perfectly. And just like most emulators, it's got a pretty extensive settings menu to customise your experience. You can use save states, change your controls, change the video settings and lots more. My preferred one is to set the aspect ratio from 16x9 to 4x3 because SNES games were made for those old square TVs, not widescreen TVs. However, in this game, F0, it doesn't bother me so much, so I'll just leave it like this. Like I said, there's lots and lots of menus to go through, so I'll leave the exploring up to you. You can see there's no lag whatsoever, it runs incredibly well. Now let's move on to the GBA emulator, called MGBA. Once you launch it from Swiss, you'll see a screen like this. It looks a bit different than the previous folder structure design, but the concept is still the same. Let's go to the SD card, then the ROMs folder, and then our GBA games folder. I'll go with Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. And just like before in the SNES emulator, the GBA emulator also runs pretty much perfectly. For some reason the display mode is this kind of zoomed out mode with black bars around the entire screen. I think it's supposed to be pixel perfect, but it looks a lot better stretched out to fill the entire screen, which of course is an option in the settings menu. If you have lots of ROMs on your SD card, then the tip I'll share in my next video will really help you out. That 2GB micro SD card is going to fill up eventually with all your stuff. In that video, I'll show you how to play GameCube game ISO files right from the SD card. So to have more than one GameCube game on the SD card at once, you'll definitely want to use a card larger than 2GB. I'll be using a 64GB card. That's huge compared to the one we're using right now. We'll still need the 2GB card, so don't think I've been tricking you all this time, don't worry. 
but that's how you install emulators on your GameCube, and there's many more out there. I hope you enjoy playing them as much as I did. Well, that's all for today. My name's Jack Sorrell, and I'll see you soon with a brand new video.